Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it stretching the rubber band because this market is extended. And then just like when you pull on that rubber band, when you finally let go, you're going to get a snapback. So let's take a look. We're going to look at the NASDAQ composite index today. Uh, drill in and see what's going on with it. Take a look at the VIX and the high yield bond fund. All right, so what's on the screen right here is the daily chart of the NASDAQ composite. So we're going to look at a couple of things. Let me drill in and look at this a little bit better. We've been riding outside the Keltner channels to the upside for several days now. I think it's like 11, 12 days. Look how long we've been above that 10-day moving average. We're trending up here nicely. Uh, one of the things I want to point out here is the RSI. Look where we're at. Now, I use a 10-day RSI in here. Okay, so you can see right there it says... Uh, 10 day and it's based on the closing price. Okay, so the reading on this 10 day was 76.2. We're getting up here in this rarefied air. So I look back and said, okay, well, how many days have we been in this year in 2019? Have we been above 76.2? Actually, there are five days. Here's one. And then we had four days right in here in this sequence right in here where we were above 76.2. So, you know, that's just, I'm just showing you this for perspective, just to give you an idea as to where we're at, just to amplify the picture that yes, we are getting a little extended. Does it mean we're gonna pull back and crash on Monday? No, but as I tell my insider members, the thing you gotta watch for is you gotta watch for the price action to tell you that it's starting to break down. Have we seen it start to break down just yet? No, but once you start to see it, you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna have an idea that this thing is about ready to turn. So let's take a look at the weekly view and see what happened for the week. For the week, we had a pretty decent move, 65.52 points on the, uh, on the NASDAQ composite. So here's the picture. Uh, we were up one, let's see, well, actually here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks in a row on the NASDAQ composite. So that's a pretty good little run. And uh, let's, let's see, the next thing I want to take a look at is the um, daily and the Elliott Wave picture. Okay, so the preferred count I've got here on the uh, NASDAQ composite is that we have completed an intermediate wave four and we're in intermediate wave five pushing to the upside. I believe we're doing an ending diagonal pattern. So far it's tracking uh, fairly well. And I'm looking for this third wave in here to complete. Every wave needs to be a zigzag and an ending diagonal pattern. And then fourth wave will overlap wave one. That's the way it works. The main rule, as I've stated before, is that wave three can never be the shortest wave. So we'll be watching that development after we get a completed wave three in here. So what, are, what am I looking at with Fibonacci projections? What I'm looking at here is C versus A. So at this point up here at 88.06, let's call it, rounding at 88.06, wave C, which is doing this A, B, C, wave C will equal wave A. Is there a rule that says it has to? No. This could uh, you know, break down at any moment. This is just a target that I'm putting out there. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. Actually, it's my 65-minute chart that I call my hourly chart. It's what I use. It divides the day into six equal bars. So here's what I think is going on. Nice trending channel going on here. I think there's a decent chance that we've completed one, two, three, four, and that wave three was fairly extended. So now where you know when I look at that, I say, well, where's this wave five in here? I'm talking about this wave five, which is the minuet level wave five, uh, wave five of C. So that's what we're trying to do. We're diagnosing wave C right now, trying to see, well, other than having C equal A as a target, where will the five wave structure in here end? And my target for that, based on the uh, minuet level waves would be 8760. So right now my range on this, if we continue to push higher in here, my target is 8760. Let me pull this down. 8760 to 85, 8806. So that's what I'm watching. And right now it looks like, acts like it wants to keep trending higher. And then again, this is the hourly view. Okay, let's take a look at the VIX. Okay, the uh, 
the CBOE volatility index, the VIX, closed at 12.05 on Friday. And that is actually the second lowest reading of the year. And you'll see where I noted these other readings. We had 12.07 on November 8th. We had 12.07 on July 24th. And we had 12.01 back over here on April 12th. Okay, these were the the other low readings, and this was the lowest reading of the year so far, and then the, in this one on Friday is the second lowest. So we're down here, extremely calm market, extremely uh, you know, readings of no fear. Uh, the volatility is basically down in the basement where it's been. Can it go lower? Yes. You know, back in 2018, the summer of 2018, for two, three months, it bounced around in the 11s to 12s. Uh, for all of that period. So yeah, it can still bounce around down here. But so far in 2019, this is the activity in terms of we had a cluster back here in April, then we had a cluster in July. And now we're clustering again here at the beginning of no end of October into November. So we'll see how long this lasts. One thing I'll just point out that I mentioned to my insider members, we track a put to call ratio. Uh, on equity only put to calls and it just gave uh, a reading that we hadn't seen uh, in a back to back readings we hadn't seen since uh, January 16th and 17th of 2018. So pretty interesting uh, stuff coming out of that. Let's take a look at the high yield bond fund. Okay, HYG had been signaling risk off and had been trending in the opposite direction of the market. The market's been doing this, going straight up. This has been doing, pulling back like this. But Friday, it bounced up a little bit, up 0.26 uh, or 26 cents on Friday. So it's going to be interesting to see, are, is it giving us a turn or is this just a one-day blip, kind of one, two-day blip? Or are we actually getting a turn? Now, one thing I noticed when I converted this to a weekly view got a little compression going on. Number one, we've got this consolidation uh, type of uh, sideways symmetrical type triangle. But this reading I've got in here of 30 cents, that's the entire trading range for the week. Okay, for the week on HYG, 30 cents. And look how it's inside the previous week, which is way inside the week before that. Okay, so we're getting some compression in here. And by the way, we haven't had a reading this low in terms of compressing since all the way back over here, the first week of September of 2018, before that huge uh, waterfall into of you know, selling into the fall. So we'll see where we go with this. At this point, what it's telling us is it's getting very compressed. And, you know, compression and expansion always cycle back and forth. So we'll see where we go. All right, that's it for this weekend. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, hit the thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscriber button. And if you'd like to have more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net and check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.